meeting of the Town of Abbey and the Planning Commission meeting to order, please. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone. It's always nice to see a good group of folks out to uh, uh, participate in these meetings. I'd like to have a roll call for attendance purposes, Mr. Bosley. Mr. Bradley? Here. Dr. White is absent. Mr. Wilson is also absent. Mr. Anderson? Here. Mr. Schumann? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. And Mr. Austin. Here. We have a form. All right. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda tonight is the approval of the July 23rd, 2018 meeting uh, minutes. And uh, originally we had June 25th. We'd already approved those. Is that correct? Okay. So we just have the July 23rd, 2018 uh, minutes that are attached to your packet. Has everyone had the opportunity to review those? Are there any modifications, additions, or subtractions to those? I move they be accepted as submitted. All right. Motion made to accept. Uh, second. Second. All right. Uh, any additional discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. All right. Um, Moving into the agenda tonight, we have, uh, first of all, a certificate of appropriateness, uh, application for a certificate of appropriateness, Holiday Inn Express and Suites, Falcon Hospitality, 625 Loretta Drive, Whitfield, owner is uh, uh, Matthew Bundy, Bundy Architecture and Engineering is the representative. Uh, construction of a new Holiday Inn and Suites, parking to be located at the Meadows. And let's reflect in the record that uh, Dr. White has arrived. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. How are you tonight? Doing good. How are you all doing? Fine. Good to see you, Mr. Brown. Good to see you, too. Um, so this is it going in one of the out parcels in the Meadows development, out parcel 9. Um, it's uh, an 83-room um, hotel, Holiday Inn, uh, Holiday Express, excuse me. Um, Holiday Inn Express and Suites. Um, and I think, um, did, Jason, did you send them this, this photo of this and two that is a little more better depiction than the, uh, the front rendering the Artex sent? Um, and that's basically it. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> Mr. Boswell, do we have the overall uh, plans there so we can see which parcel this yeah. is going on? I don't have the, well, this is the lot nine, uh, parcel nine that it's on, Mr. Austin. Uh, I don't have a rendering of the entire uh, Meadows facility, but that is lot nine. Is this the only hotel, motel? I have no idea of the restrictions that would be in the meadows. This is the only one I'm working on. <laughs> Mel, how, what's the relationship between this building and Cumming Street? How visible is it going to be? Which, um, which part of it? It would be fairly visible. Uh, this parcel, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I think it's straight across from where the Food City is going, I mean, across from their parking lot. Um, and it's got a huge, uh, you just got a large slope that they're constructing down the back. Um, it's 20, it's 20, about 30 feet high, so it's going to be filled in pretty high, I think, like everything is. So um, I'd say it will be sort of as visible as everything is in there. Do you know, I, I'm not real familiar with the whole layout of the subdivision. 
I've just looked at this one a lot, and it's going to be a level lot. It's pre-prepared, so I haven't had to do any real engineering work on it, real extensive engineering work on it, because um, they have everything ready. We just kind of hook up. And uh, the front of this building will be facing what? That means streets, the interstate. Uh, it faces, the, the front of the building faces to the north. Okay. It should face, um, it'll face food then city. away from the interstate. And toward food, uh, food City Bill. Yes. What uh, materials are on the facade? I'm yeah, there's a mixture. There's sort of panels. The gray part is a is a um, gray panel, like um, the uh, I think it's hardy board type panel. Then below gets into um, I think that's split face block down below. With a, it's it's a pattern. It's a rough. It's either stucco or split face block. And is it labeled on that elevation that the architect sent? I think so. I think it's the first page you have in there. Yeah, up one more. Two. The, the, the one that you just passed is significantly different looking than the one in our pack. If you go on up. And it, it, in that one, it almost appears that the, the red may be, or the darker may be, some sort of brick, whereas in this, it, it, it's not. I don't think that it is. It's just a different color of paneling. That gray and the red is mm -hmm. a, um, it's called a hardy board paneling, which is a solid uh, panel. And then uh, below it is just accents with the, the rougher material. Um, It looks to me like it's just a rougher material to hardy board paneling. This, and this, and this, this is what they've given us. Yeah, this is what we have. And it is significantly different than what's on the screen. Yeah, this was the original that was sent, and then um, this was the rendering that we received last week. Yeah, I felt like, well, uh, Mr. Boswell and I talked about trying to get you something a little more descriptive, showing the building a little better. That elevation really was just sort of colored, uh, looked like to me by the architect, and didn't really, um, I don't know, I feel like this gives you a pretty good idea of exactly what it's going to look like. Um, but these are, um, Holiday Inn Express has exactly how they want these buildings. They publish out a, uh, a brand standard requirement, and uh, it's, it's very difficult to deviate from that. Well, you know, the discussion that we had that involved um, the savings and loan, uh, Eastman Credit Union, and the discussion about the Food City building was that these buildings were supposed to reflect each other and that, you know, the facades would be, if not the same, would be similar. And, and this one is not at all in character with either one of those two buildings. Mm -hmm. No, with the plans that we'll see. Well, the, you know, the both of them were brick buildings, and the discussion was that there had been a whole lot of uh, give and take with Food City in order to get the building to be what the Planning Commission wanted it to be and the Council wanted it to be, and this building doesn't doesn't reflect either one of those right. two buildings. One of the buildings going on the ball field. Do what? The building's going on doesn't reflect what the buildings look like on the ball field. Well, it, this doesn't reflect anything like what's in the other part of the development that we've approved so far. It, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that there were restrictions on what the building looked like, but we could forward those to the architect and, and see what they can do to meet those. Um, I don't know if, if you have samples of what you want it to look like or if... 
don't know how you how do you plan to do the process as far as that goes. I mean, I, I think that you know, there's at least in, in the discussions we've had in terms of what's supposed to be in the development that we've had in the, within the planning commission and on the votes we have, particularly as it related to going back when we approved the city building and then when we approved the. Uh, uh, the uh, savings and loan building, the Eastman Credit Union building, there was discussion about brick and, and having some sort of tie in with that different type of, of, of design. And um, and like I say, this building doesn't, doesn't reflect that. Mm -hmm. And that, that, to me, it gives me a, that's a concern for me. Right. And we've had other instances where large corporate plans are drawn up and we rejected them or has some changes and the steers that that could not be changed got changed. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I understand that. So. Well, I'm, I'm not suggesting that the whole facade has to be brick, but I think there has to be something to tie that that building in with the other buildings, the Food City building and and the uh, and the bank. I think you know, right. that's to me that, that that's part of what we discussed. Do you have anything showing what those look like? It's funny. I think we have plans of what Food City um, with their proposed. I think while we're on that subject that it might do well for us to uh, send a letter of invitation to the developer uh, and ask that a representative come to our next meeting to discuss consistency of what they're going to put there uh, so that we don't do it on a piecemeal basis and end up with, with something that's not pleasing there at all. I agree. I agree. And I don't think Time is a lesson to you. I mean, we're there's so grading and there's still um, yeah, there's some things going on that, that need to happen. I'll, I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. All right, sir. That uh, that this be taken to the next meeting and that we invite a representative of the developer to be present at that meeting to discuss consistency of both these uh, projects and, uh, and future buildings that will be in there. Second to that motion. I'll second. All right. Any additional discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. And opposed? All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Jason, can you email me some kind of rendering that I can email to the architect to show them what we need to start working towards? Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Bundy. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda tonight is an application for a certificate of appropriateness for McDonald's, USA LLC, 4601 Six Forks Road, Suite 200 in Raleigh, North Carolina. Owner is John Connolly, Britt Peters, and Associates uh, Falls Park Drive of Greenville, South Carolina representative. Remodel of the existing McDonald's restaurant to include updated uh, building facade, new decor, new uh, front counter, and rework of the existing restrooms for ADA compliance with new finishes. Uh, this is the McDonald's that is located at 1105 Old Berry Drive here in Abingdon, zoned B2, and its tax map 104C2-12-4. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I say thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Uh, let me uh, talk in front of you. I do have, it's okay, I just Let me passed interrupt this you. For our record, would you give us your full name and business address? Uh, okay, yes, sir. Uh, my, my full name is John Andrew Connolly, uh, professional engineer of uh, Greenville, South Carolina. So the address is 101 Falls Park Drive, Greenville, South Carolina, 29601. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Well, I do have just some paper copies that might help show better um, the, the paint colors. It's the top two um, paint swatches. That would uh, at least give you a better idea of what McDonald's is going to do. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, so, this McDonald's, this is the really the second phase of the renovation for this project. The, the first phase, um, we corrected the ADA um, outside the building and worked on the drive through equipment. 
Um, this second phase, I, I think, uh, is going to be a little more substantial to the building, so they're going to the, knock off the, uh, the mansard roofs. Like the, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these McDonald's. They've been doing them all across the country, trying to remodel them to, to look like the current standard that they have. Um, so with this building, it's primarily going to be taking off the, the roof mansards from the exterior and then placing up what they call brand walls to kind of identify where the doors are for customers to locate. So those will be EFIS um, stucco walls that are painted those two colors uh, at the top of those uh, paint swatches. Um, and then on the interior, <coughs> they're going to totally redo the, um, the dining room. That will be new decor. And then they'll fix the bathrooms to, to meet ADA. So there will be a couple of walls made for that. But there won't be done, anything done in the kitchen itself. And then also on the exterior, uh, McDonald's, since the last um, renovation to the, uh, the drive through they've updated that again, and there's going to be digital menu boards added to the drive through Questions? Uh, anyone have? I think this is similar to what we approved for the uh, changes at, at the Wendy's. It's a different exit now. It was exit uh, 77, and this is a 14, but similar, similar request to the commission. And the top of that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That, and, and those two other restaurants conform to the national standard. How about the signage? Let me thank you signage. for giving us nice, uh, nice pictures here on the sand uh, This is very, very helpful. Very you. You're welcome. Yeah. We have received a sign permit from McDonald's, and we're reviewing it currently. Uh, they will not be replacing the freestanding sign, just the sign of John. Questions of this gentleman. All right. Any discussion regarding that? And I'd be pleased to entertain any motion regarding this application for certificate of appropriateness. I recommend we approve this submitted. All right. Motion has been made to approve the application for certificate of appropriateness as provided for uh, here. Second to that motion. Mr. Anderson, second. Any additional discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed. Thank you. It's approved, sir. Thank you very much for your time. All right, next uh, we have an application for a certificate of appropriateness, multi-use sports complex east of Green Spring Road, post office box 789 in Abingdon, owner uh, Matt uh, Bullock, uh, town of Abingdon, representative requesting approval of the final architectural design of proposed structures. Structures were previously presented to the Planning Commission for preliminary review and comment on June 25th at the meeting at that time. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm Tyler Bensel, the town engineer, uh, in stepping in place for Matt tonight. Uh, he's on his way back from, from Charlottesville. Um, yeah, like you like you said, Mr. Austin, the, uh, this was seen as a preliminary design um, in the June 25th Planning Commission meeting um, at the time, and as is in the, the this packet as well. A rendering of the field layout with uh, parking spaces for the soccer fields. There's a little less than 200 spaces uh, for the the northern side, and a little over 200 um, spaces here in the uh, the south uh, west corner for the uh, the baseball fields and then the the, uh, the third soccer field uh, there in the corner. Um, there are four buildings. Um, you've got. Got my notes here. The batting cage, which is building R on the rendering, uh, you've got a concession stand, building uh, J, which is a concession restroom score area, um, and that has a second story. And then you've uh, got building I, which is a one-story concession near the soccer fields, and the maintenance building in the lower corner uh, for the Parks and Rec department. Um, 
there's a couple different renderings for each building in the packet. Um, I talked to Matt on the phone and he said that uh, that was presented last time, I guess, based on budgetary uh, items as they come up throughout the project. You've got an all brick or you've also got the option to do some siding. It's a little cheaper uh, or more budget friendly, I guess. So, um, and I think mentioned last time was uh, the stone portion to be gray instead of tan. And uh, we would like to, to move with the gray option. Any questions about that? Mr. Boswell, will you uh, send this to Mr. Bundy so he can send it to this holiday <laughs> and on <architect>. the <laughs> Yes, sir. Because that, that does reflect both of the other buildings, whether or not it's all brick, but it does look yeah. outside. <clears throat> oh, and it's a yeah, green standing scene, metal roof, too. Tyler, have you been involved in the planning for all this as it goes along? I've been speckled in throughout the process, yeah, yeah more, more so now good. than before. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if, if there was really a need for 471 parking space. We leave that up to the designer. Uh, they, they had, when we went through the process of interviews, they had a pretty good track record with building sports facilities and they used their previous history with that to yeah. kind of estimate parking. Well, of course, you know, there's potential for a large number of children that's going on at one time, right. you know, parents and grandparents and everything else help. But, you know. And we assume people will also use it who aren't there for the for ball games, they'll probably use it for the, the playground the area trail. or the cricket trail. Yeah. It's the idea tonight that the Planning Commission would approve both option A and option B uh, or will you bring that back once it's determined which you're going to? I think we would, would want we would like for both options to be approved and move and move in the direction I guess as the as we come to a final design for uh, the project we would look at the overall budget at that point and see kind of which direction we need to go. If, if you all would like for us to return and make that decision later, uh, once we have a budget, that would be up to you. But I think it would be our hope that you would approve both and we could make the, the call at the, at the time we figure out what we, what we can do. We would love, we would love to do the brick option. With the developers here. Mm -hmm. Let the town make sure they coordinate with the developer also. Which we hope is next meeting. Yeah, our, our hope is to go with the brick option. Uh, the siding would be a, uh, I guess, it, you know, a budget budgetary reason, or if, it, if we if we need to, to, to go that route. But our hope would be to do the, the all brick. Now, how soon do you think that that decision would be made as to which option you would want to go forward with? Uh, as far as I know, they're really close <laughs> to. Uh, coming up with what we call 90% plans for, for grading and, uh, and for layout. So we hope to know something fairly soon. I guess we, we, we could, if we want to prove it, say that our preference would be all brick unless there's a budgetary concern a significant budgetary concern, maybe. That's a significant difference, Steve. The, the brick really, I think, looks, it looks a lot better. better. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Well, and, and again, I think one of the things that, that we want to make sure we do is to hold the other uh, folks who are in this development to that standard and the standard that the store has. Um, you know, I think that would I think that it would be important in terms of what we're trying to accomplish. You know, after hearing Mr. Schumann's comments, I think that 
proven both options, maybe I think it's obvious that the Planning Commission has has an inkling that the all brick structure, we like the larger structures like this press block structure, if we could do that all brick and then maybe one of the smaller structures financially if it didn't come out that give them the option to step down. Uh, I mean, design elements aesthetically, they all fit together. Um, so it would give, I think, it would give them the option to, if they needed to take a cheaper route, you might could do it. Uh, a, a larger structure in all brick and if we had to step down to a maintenance building with some siding. Sure. Well, in the siding on those smaller buildings is significantly less anyway. Right. 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 What are your thoughts in regards to this? I suppose that is the threshold question as to whether or not you want to uh, approve both options. Or well, are you are you looking for a specific motion? I, I mean, I think there are people here who want to discuss it. Do you want to do that in terms of having a motion on the floor? Sure. Okay. Yes. Well, then in that case, I would I would uh, move that we approve the bulky st uh, sports complex. Um, with the uh, and with the idea that the, that the uh, planning commission would want the structures in all brick, but that um, if that became a financial issue, that the smaller structures could be uh, could have some siding uh, with the larger structure being all brick. All right. And and for clarification of that motion, would you anticipate? the town needing to come back to the Planning Commission once those determinations are made? Or? No, I, I think if what we're saying is, if, it, if all we're talking about is the smaller structures, I, I would say no. Okay. I, I would say though that if, let's say that if the town got to the point where they couldn't accommodate, I think they would have to, but we're saying we're going to approve it with all brick for the larger structures and maybe some modifications for the smaller ones. To be left in the discretion of the, yes. of the town. And that, but that also includes acting on the certificate of appropriateness for the for the overall complex because I yes. think that's what we're dealing with here. So that's that's the motion. All right. Second to the motion. I'll second. All right. So motion has been made and seconded. Let's uh, discuss the motion. Any questions that anyone has on the commission? Additional uh, discussion. Are you ready for a vote? Uh, may I make a comment? Uh, no, sir. We're going to have some public time just in a moment uh, that we will make that available to you. I assure you of that, sir. Thank you. All right. Let's do roll call on this, uh, please, Mr. Foss. Mr. Bradley? Aye. <clears throat> Dr. White? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Schumann? Aye. Mr. Ellis? Aye. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, old business with matters that are, uh, that are not on the agenda, and I want to go to public comment time just in a moment. But I do have listed on here a comprehensive plan update. What do we need to know about that? Uh, we sent out an RFP August 15th for a comp plan update uh, that was distributed um, on our website. <clears throat> and we also distributed it through EVA, the state website, for things of that nature. Um, so that got sent out to about 2,100 firms in the state of Virginia. So the uh, proposal end date will be September 30th. questions regarding that. I would also note in terms of old business that is not on the agenda that we did receive uh, information regarding the uh, Kroger uh, gas station. Uh, I just got that, I think, well, maybe Friday, but I just got printed off today. And so I'm going to suggest that we uh, just keep uh, that information uh, uh, read it and then we'll discuss it at our next meeting. That's, uh, could we uh, could we ask if it's possible for Mr. Bell to be here since he wrote the memo? Um, I just 
Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, I think it would be helpful. Yes. And that may be something we contemplate going into uh, closed session to discuss since it deals with uh, uh, the attorney's advice in regards to We don't have to. That's something we can discuss whether we want to or not. Any other? Yeah, I just think it's important to have him here. Sure, so we can have sure. Him. Any other old business? All right. If not, I'd next like to go into a public comment time that is not on the agenda tonight. This is the opportunity for anyone that is present here tonight uh, to address the commission. Uh, I will ask that if anyone would like to address the commission regarding any matter, whether it's something that has come before the commission on the agenda tonight or otherwise, to please come forward to elect and give us your full name so that we'll have that for the record and your uh, physical address and uh, under the uh, rules that have been previously imposed your comments are to be limited to three minutes and I understand we have a sign-up sheet um, we'll go through these folks and then I will open it up to uh, any others beyond this that, that uh, did not sign in so we want to be sure and hear from everyone that wants to address the Commission tonight uh, first on the list it looks like is uh, Warren Harris Mr. Harris. <clears throat> I'd like to thank you for hearing my comments. Uh, I have a question. I, I, it seemed that you were approving the buildings and then you said, and the larger complex. So have you improved everything about the complex now? Or what happened? Well, uh, tonight on the agenda was a certificate of appropriateness for the uh, athletic fields and for those buildings that were associated with that and uh, have we approved the entire complex the answer would be no because as you can tell there are other parts of the development that uh, we table tonight for example and we will I'm sure be dealing with this for quite some time okay the, well my, my uh, I'm, I'm a supporter of the sports complex I think it's a great thing to have in town uh, my main concern, uh, given all this, uh, is that uh, there is question of air pollution and noise pollution because of its being so close to the interstate. Um, and I know all of you here know about the heavy traffic on the interstate. Now, it's my feeling that there should be testing of the air quality uh, from a health point of view, if we're going to have children out there for years breathing, you know, with all this. Uh, and also the noise factor, which would, you know, definitely be a problem for enjoying the activities. Um, now, I was very happy to see that in the picture there is what appears to be, after, and in comparison to what I've seen out there, there appears to be a hill uh, that is on the uh, near the interstate for uh, the western part of the sports complex and trees and there appear to be some other trees uh, although you can't really see it's cut off for part of it. One of the fields is practically right on the interstate the, the, one of the general purpose fields so my concern would be that, that your approval be subject to there being some kind of appropriate barrier to deal with air pollution and noise pollution. And so I hope this is not just a pretty picture, but this is what's going to actually be there. And I hope that there will be even more uh, trees and whatever else might be a good barrier and if that's not adequate, that you consider whether there needs to be some kind of a wall barrier. Uh, so, and I think that's all depend would be dependent on testing, you know, for the air quality and the noise pollution. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you very much. We'll certainly uh, we listen to your comments and we'll certainly take those into consideration as this proceeds. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, next we have uh, Katie Green. I'm here to discuss a very serious issue that involves the health and welfare of my entire neighborhood and beyond. I'll read it briefly. Ma'am, could you speak up just a little? For 20 years, I have lived on the opposite side of the college hilltop. We have been good and peaceful neighbors. I have taught college classes, and we've never had a problem until now. We discovered that the current leadership has been secretly planning to build a tall and lethal cell phone tower very close to our neighborhood, within yards, on the low ground, by the way. They're doing this for $2,000 a month, and there's no need for the tower at all. They are willing to kill us and our neighbors with radiation due to the close proximity of the tower. Many of my neighbors are elderly and live very close to the proposed tower. They will die due to the radiation. They were hoping that no one would find it out until it was too late to stop it. We discovered their secret plan when they illegally sprayed Roundup all along the tree line from the college clear down to the end of Campbell Street, where I live. The, the, the tree line separates our property from the planned technology park that they want to build. We support the park, but they also plan to cut down all of the trees which brings me to another issue. Cutting down the trees is not part of the comprehensive plan. The current leadership at the college are liars. They lied to us about the cell phone tower and the illegal spraying. They do not care about anyone but themselves and the college is spiraling down. We need to intervene and stop the tower and hopefully save the college. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I have Rob Smith. Mr. Smith? Yes. yes. Please state your name and address for a record, please. Oh, well, my name is Robert Smith. I live at 247 Campbell Street, Southwest in Abingdon. Beautiful little place up there. Um, and I'm here today to talk about the uh, proposed cell phone tower. But first, I'd like to thank Mr. Sullivan for his decisive action on this issue. Uh, is that you? Are you the interim town manager? I am, but we, we didn't have anything. To, we just followed the rules. That's oh. all we did. Well, so, that's all that's, I asked. That's the guys that enforce the rules. This guy right here was, was the one. So. Yes, sir. And, and, and thank you very much. Uh, there, I want to ask if you were all familiar with this, uh, with this debacle. VHCC attempted to build a cell phone tower in the uh, stone, uh, stone, uh, stone mill uh, technology park. Uh, apparently there's a, another corporation called Virginia Highlands Community College Educational Foundation Incorporated uh, and they work very closely with uh, VHCC, the community college. And this is normal. Most uh, colleges have a foundation that works with them to receive gifts and do projects and things of that nature. But in this instance, uh, they tried to pull a fast one. They, these people at the, at the college and with the foundation, somehow, I don't know how they did it for sure, but they convinced the town that they were just going to upgrade an existing cell phone tower that's on VHCC property. Well, what they did was the foundation bought land adjacent to our property, Hayes and my property, and they were going to, instead of, instead of renovating the existing tower, they were planning to build a separately a new tower down on corporate corporation land, which would have fallen under the codes because the stone, uh, stone mill uh, uh, technology park, uh, you know, it's got some pretty restrictive uh, codes there. No buildings over 45 feet, underground utilities and that kind of thing, uh, which is just fine. It's supposed to be light, uh, light industrial uh, housing, restaurants, you know, a nice community park with a park-like atmosphere. Uh, the cell phone tower would not have, uh, <coughs> would have destroyed any, any chances for a nice park-like atmosphere, I think. 
And it was right in the middle of these communities, which would have provided a lot of radiation, bombarded us with radiation. It was going to be, what, 120 feet from our house, uh, and very near to other houses in the community. And so uh, we, we came in and talked to a couple of people at the town, in the town building, and, and uh, Mr. Sullivan enforced the laws, which was very good. But I don't think this is over. I think they're going to try something else that's even more underhanded. This was a, a conspiracy between the corporation and, and the uh, Virginia Highlands Community College, and they were missed. They used equivocation, misdirection, they outright lies, not just to me uh, and the town, but to other people in the community. And I've gone around and told them that uh, the town has put a kibosh on the project for the time being, and it was interesting to hear all the stories I got back from what they had been told. The, uh, a couple of the people, vice presidents up there, one of the vice presidents uh, is registered agent for the corporation. Uh, and she is also working as a vice president for VHCC. There's another vice president who uh, is in charge of uh, uh, finances and administration. She's also on the board of directors uh, for uh, the corporation, uh, the foundation. And so these people had somehow, somehow they twisted it around to make everyone think that they were just upgrading the existing tower, but it wonder, when in reality they were trying to build a separate tower, a new one down on the corporation land. And so we think that they're going to try something else. And so I'm, I'm asking you folks to help us out. You know, don't let them build a cell phone tower in, in uh, your, your new development down there. I'd love to see this. Uh, Technology development take off, put some nice light manufacturing down there and some amenities, that'd be great. Uh, and maintain this park like appearance. But, you know, if they put this cell phone tower down there, it's, it's going to be curtains <laughs> for a lot of us. Uh, so, I guess that's all the comments that I have. Thank you. I wanted to bring this to your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing that. Next on my list, I have uh, Jim Moore, Dr. Moore. To see you this evening, Thank sir. you. Thanks for the opportunity. Appreciate y'all doing uh, public comment. Um, I know. In the spirit of open government, which the new town council has embraced, and you might want to consider. I can hear. I can. You might want to consider having the public comment period first before you address every item on the agenda and vote on it. So you can take the public comment from the public in consideration before you make your vote. We seem to have got the cart by the horse, but that's a different story. Um, I'm here to talk about the sports complex. Um, there was a picture in the paper today that showed the, the schematics of it. Um, I'd be curious to know what, what those designs cost the taxpayers, what the budget is to build it out. Um, a comment was made about the proximity to the interstate. Um, it's hard to tell from that picture exactly what it really looks like, so I got a picture for you. I'd like you to take a look at where the edge of your ball field is going to be in relationship to the interstate. <coughs> this tree line right here is the, is the fence line on the right away of the interstate. This dirt you see is a, almost a vertical cut down to the level of the ball field. So it runs right up to the right away of the interstate. Um, as you can see, here's Garville ends right there. There is no Garville, no, no barrier at all. Uh, I don't know whether or not the layout is, is permanent, but I would hope that you would entertain before you approve the final layout of all of these fields some public input on where they should be repositioned to, to get the fields away from the interstate as much as you can. Not just for noise or air pollution, as was brought up by Mr. Harris, but <clears throat> Within the past few years, at least two tractor trailers have run off the interstate right there. Um, one landed between the two bridges there across the trail. So, it's, if I had a child laying out there, I'd be really concerned about the fact that these fields are right up against the a vertical cut against the right of way of the interstate. You can't tell that from looking at these schematic drawings. I don't know how many of you walked the Creeper Trail, but it's, it's rather impressive. Thank you. Thank you. 
thank you very much. Let me just briefly uh, make a comment that in regards to the financial matters that, that you spoke about a moment ago, of course, this planning commission has no knowledge of any of those, nor is that uh, within our bailiwick, so to speak. Uh, and uh, as you can also tell from uh, actions we've taken tonight, we're largely approving uh, buildings and designs of buildings and, and things along those lines. So many of the things you're talking about are not within the purview of the Planning Commission itself. All right, uh, next I have uh, Mr. Humphreys. Or at least that's what it looks like on it this list. Like it looks just like it in person. <laughs> I really don't have a lot, of, lot to say. I just wanted to, to uh, follow up because I knew that the, uh, the Holiday Inn was coming in this evening, or coming in this evening, and uh, and Mr. Schumann dutifully uh, reminded all of us and uh, all the people on commission about what uh, what we set as a hallmark for how we wanted the buildings to look over there. Uh, different uh, town square type and also having the brick and, and kind of the, the, uh, the modeling of, of having it. Uh, I would think that if we could do the large buildings though with the red brick that the smaller buildings are going to be less expensive and should be able to fit into a budget fairly readily. I think I, I think it would be an easy out to be able to just say, well, we'll throw the brick on there, but the rest of them are going to be clapboard and do that right off the bat. So it'd be nice to be able sure to have comparison figures to make sure that that is what is happening, and uh, and it not be just a you know a little bit extra. Also, you're looking at on the clapboard, it is uh, it is considerable more up to, you. and so uh, to have the clapboard there and have to paint it and to to spray it and make sure that it doesn't meld you and all the stuff could be an added expense that should be looked at and factored in along with actually the building materials. So there's several different things to look at. Um, and then the other thing uh, with, the, and, and so, uh, and that's with the, with the, you know, on the Holiday Inn. Now on the sports complex side, it's kind of flipping back to the sports complex side, there has been, a, and, and if you all want to pull it, uh, I think probably VDOT uh, and the DEQ have done the, the air study and air quality survey. Uh, they've done it uh, the, the corridor through uh, through uh, this corridor, and those uh, those are readily available to look at, so that you would know. And, and obviously, we all want to make sure that that the children are having the utmost of, of health and safety when they're out there. And so, you know, it, it, you know, it could be that more trees to be planted or some type of buffer put up. I know as as um, as I have two grandsons that play travel ball, and uh, especially in Kingsport and Johnson City and several, several of those are right beside also the interstates. One of them actually has uh, the uh, ramp that comes off and runs right almost into the ballpark, the ramp does. So, you know, and, and I'm sure those are all concerns for all parents, grandparents, and the general public as they, as they move forward. So, anyway, other than that, uh, thank you guys for, for listening to me again. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, if that's all I have on the sign-up sheet uh, in an attempt to be sure everyone's heard. If anyone else would have liked to address the Planning Commission, whether you've signed up or not, please feel free to come up. Yes, sir, please. Yep. Hi. Just state your name for the for a record, please. Joe Levine. Yes, sir. 340 and 350 Green Spring Road. A uh, couple comments regarding the sports complex, because uh, we haven't finalized the fields and the design and everything completely. <clears throat> I've asked this before, and I'll ask again, that. Uh, that you hold either the planning committee or the town council or maybe jointly hold a public discussion uh, time before finalizing the total plans to get the input, kind of like you had tonight, but also a back and forth dialogue with the planners there and questions. A couple comments I'd make. One is there's a lot of asphalt on the parking. Uh, and I've mentioned this before, can't we do the grass paver things? Uh, which are very common in sports type complexes. The difference is your asphalt is 100% runoff, your grass pavers are 90% absorption. I mean, a whole lot, uh, it, number one, it would look a lot better to have the asphalt pavers, which is, it's not, pay, you know, it's, you've seen it's like a honeycomb effect, the grass grows up through it. Uh, so I suggest that instead of the asphalt. Uh, also, following up on borrowing Harris's comments on the air quality and also Rick Humphreys. You know, VDOT does the general wide area things. I would also suggest a site-specific uh, air emission testing uh, because of the fact that the fields are lower than the interstate and most of the particulate matter and the 
VOCs are heavier than air. And you might also consider asking VDOT in their plans for the Exit 17 project to put a sound barrier along the interstate there, uh, which would help tremendously with the noise. And since your VOCs are heavier than air, that would tend to keep it onto the interstate and not let it spill into the fields. Thank you very much. Mr. Lund, do you have any idea of the cost of those <clears throat> pavers? Uh, they're steel, aren't they? Pardon? Uh, no, they're steel. steel. They're concrete. Uh, they're, it's like a I honeycomb. I see them, though, with steel, too. Uh, I think you they're can do that. They're honeycombed. They're, they're honeycombed. And I, I know, actually, you can go down, to, because I'm going to put them in for the little driveway where I'm putting my uh, the, the cottage, or, which I call the beginning of the creeper trail. And there are, they're more expensive than asphalt, but they are not as expensive as brick pavers, like you're using on the, uh, the, the walkway around the creeper trail and things. So it's, you, you've got two areas of parking, and uh, uh, what is the name of the Blue Ridge Hardscapes? Uh, is one that place they actually have them and they could quote and let people know the difference in prices. Well, I've seen them before. These are these are around the farmers market. It is. It is. There's some of them around the farmers market. The farmers market. In front of the students. All right. Is there anyone else that would like to address? Yes, sir. Please come on. My name is Zach Tritt, 963 Woodlawn Terrace, Northeast, Abingdon 24210. Um, just some points, and you know, I, I'm kind of out of the loop on, on other, other than what I've read in the paper, but um, I run a travel ball organization out of Abingdon. Uh, we have seven, uh, seven teams now, um, and we pull kids from as far as Greenville, Tennessee, and Tazewell, Virginia, to Abingdon five days a week. Um, we are at these complexes on a weekly basis. Just came from one, obviously, in Kingsport this weekend. Um, but just wanted to mention some things that, from an assumption standpoint, uh, this is supposed to be bringing business to Abingdon, tax dollars to Abingdon, um, various situations like that, the whole thing. I just wanted to give some ideas uh, before you finalize things just from the pictures that we've seen. Um, obviously you've got the cloverleaf field which is which is needed. Um, just some things about it to make sure that you don't cut yourself short uh, in, in what you're able to offer there. Notice that two of the fields are have the grass which is always a big thing and I know Little League's going to be using it as well. Um, but you aren't going to draw softball uh, with just two fields. And softball brings a lot of teams. Uh, they bring a lot of teams on one-day events. They're there from six, basically six, seven o'clock in the morning till midnight. Um, you eat at a lot of restaurants during softball tournament, um, but it takes more than two fields to be able to. So you know, from from, from an organization standpoint, it's hard to take my teams there, or my girls there, if it's going to make us be there even longer. If that makes sense. Um, but um, from a skinned infill standpoint, or the other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, this is turf. Have you all looked into the possibilities of turfing? Uh, the longevity of the turf, the life of the turf is typically about 12 years, uh, which cuts down on maintenance, which cuts down on mowing, which saves gas, which also cuts down on someone having to be there to maintain and make that decision on whether or not you're going to play that day. Uh, you could ask Greg Creech on the amount of money and ask uh, the Kingsport, City of Kingsport, how much money they lost out on this previous baseball season just from March through June on the amount of rain outs that they had. Uh, when you're cutting 25 to 30 teams out on a weekend because the field managers up at 6 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning happen to make a determination on are the fields playable or are they not. You cancel 30 teams on an average of 11 kids per team, typically four people. You're, you're looking at about 350 people not coming into the town that specific weekend, which, which once again is money. Um, just from an organizational standpoint, as towns cancel tournaments, we could quit looking to go there just because we want to make sure that we play and we want to go where we're pretty much guaranteed to play. If you've not looked at the Ripken experience in Pigeon Forge, 
I think that you ought to take a look at it. It's an all-turf facility. Um, other than lightning, you play, uh, which means that the families are there, which means that they typically stay overnight because it's a two-day event. I know with the Holiday Inn, that's, that's nights that you're bringing families in and you're keeping them here overnight. You're not losing them to maybe another weekend or maybe not traveling back in. Um, you know, not, not to knock any of the, the other concerns, but, you know, the interstate, we've played there, we've played multiple places, Christiansburg as well. Uh, the noise, it's never been an issue. Um, don't let that deter you. Um, parents show up, they bring their families, they come. It's not anything that's ever going to stop us from playing because there's traffic on uh, There's traffic at Russell Road, and uh, it's, it's, it's not stopping from coming. Um, but uh, no, that, that is all I have. Thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? Please, sir. My name is James William Dayton, 133 Valley Street Northwest. Just a couple comments on the layout of the field. I just saw it in the paper. I have a, I don't know, a father of four children. Two of them played a lot of soccer. So looking at the, the soccer fields that are near the creeper trail, it seems much too close to me. You're going to have soccer balls going into the creeper trail all game long. Kids are going to be going over there trying to get the ball and come back. Also, having, I think it was four soccer fields in one area and one stuck over by itself. A lot of times uh, parents are watching two kids on two different teams and, and trying to separate to go over there to watch or, you know, I think we need to take a, another look at the layout of the fields to try to get all the soccer fields together. It seems like that was kind of an afterthought or just there was an empty space that's sticking over there. So that's just my thoughts. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. If not, I'll pass this down to Mr. Croswell and ask that he make that part of our minutes for tonight's meeting. Are there any other announcements that we need to make uh, regarding the planning commission? Any other matters not on the agenda that we need to discuss? Who was it that you had discussed with us the land of the ball fields? Two meetings ago, back in June? That, that, was the, uh, that was the design that I was given yeah. going through that. I think we probably need I just The only thing I wanted to mention was, is, the, is that fifth field that he's talking about? Third field, he's talking about the third field on the bottom for the soccer is actually a practice field. It's not a playing. It's not a practice. It's only it's two There's only two regulation fields. fields. The other one is just a practice field. All right. Can I, can I say, have you closed it down yet? I just, I just, I just, and I, I didn't get, it, it was at Mr. Tripp. I'm Nan Carmen. I live at 498 Green Spring Road. And, um, uh, Mr. Tripp was talking about travel ball. I, I just, I would like to ask, I've, I've had this question from the beginning. If there are four baseball diamonds and two regulation soccer fields, I, I would like to know the requirements for travel ball. And that would help determine, you know, how much money you're going to bring in. If you have two regulation soccer fields, I, I don't know. Is that will that be enough for travel ball right. and to bring in the money and the people and the same thing with the, the baseball? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, sure. All right. Not quite. Were you finished with your uh, comment? Did you? Uh, well, it sounds like perhaps we ought to get back to the uh, design of the ball fields. I would need to also discuss mm -hmm. if we really can change it if we want to change it. So what is he talking about with turf? Is he talking about natural grass? No, he's talking no. about that. But That's I don't I don't think in terms of what we approved tonight, and I think this is important, I don't think we precluded any type of, of barrier. In other words, that there's no what we didn't preclude that from happening. And we, what we did didn't preclude whether or not it's turf or, or astroturf or whatever it is. I think that's something within the certificate of appropriateness that would be determined 
and really wouldn't be something that we would be we, we would have any expertise on. No, it does we have any decision making right, ability. Right. Exactly. Regarding. So I mean, and again, I think you could, you you could, you certainly could put whatever barriers were needed. You could determine what type of grass. I hope you know that type of thing. I don't think that's anything we have dealt with or would deal with in terms of, of our certificate of appropriateness. I think that safety, would, the safety first. Who know, deals with that? With the, the turf. Right, and then I think that really is up to the, the people doing. That, that's certainly not something that I, I know anything about. Right. I, I think you do. Yeah, but I do. Yeah. It's uh, safety is the main thing. With that turf, you're going to have a whole lot of injuries. You know, it's, it's, it's going to absorb water. That's going to make it wet and slick. You know, whereas in, with uh, grass, eventually grass is going to dry. So you got to look at the Last time that that turf is good for 12 years, he's been going to finally say spend the millions of dollars again to put it replace it. That's something we got to, you know, we'll, we'll discuss. Well, and again, I don't think that's that's you say, Mr. Schubert, that we don't have any. No, I'm not mission to have you say so. If not, not in that type of situation. I think the design, the the certificate of appropriateness for the design is what we approved, but it didn't doesn't necessarily mean that we approved a particular type of grass or or a particular uh, you know you know could the could the size of the fields vary certainly could could you put up a, a a barrier certainly you could do that you know the idea could you plant more trees along the creeper trail sure you could do that within what we approved. But that's not what we that's not what we would be deciding. That who would? Who do you think who would <clears throat> decide the final design of the ball fields? Well the materials and the, uh, the materials I think would have to come with somebody who has a level of expertise that we don't have. We would approve it. The planning yeah. commission. I don't see this. I don't think so. Not the materials that go on the fields, things like that. Yeah. I mean whether it's astroturf or turf or no. no. Who approves that? I would think that would be within the purview of the developer, which is the town in this situation. I would think. Who is the town, though? I mean, yeah, I'll make the decision right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is, it, is it town manager's decision? Or who's no, I think, I think one of the things that has to be done is uh, once once as we move forward and this gets finalized, and you know, we certainly have to bid several different pieces and components and uh, certainly with the rec commission's input uh, you have to look at which would be the most playable surface over the longest duration and I think those are the types of decisions that you need to rely upon the rec commission for. I mean they built a coom center at one time or at least they helped build a coom center at one time. I think they, they that's where the expertise lies in, in things like field design, field shape, turf composition. <coughs> those are the folks that rely on to make good recommendations. We will not exclude ourselves in that decision. Well, I think individual members could certainly have any input they want to have. Uh, and there's vacancies on the rec commission, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let me follow up on a comment that uh, Dr. Moore made tonight regarding the public comment section. And Dr. White, you've been on the planning commission much longer than I. You and Mr. Schumann have uh, veteran status when it comes to it. Uh, do you think it would be wise to move the public comment portion uh, to just after approval of the minutes before we considered other items on the agenda? Do you feel comfortable leaving it where it is? Well, I would agree that uh, it was kind of awkward today that we had already voted before we allowed mm -hmm. public discussion. And I thought that you normally did ask for public input before we took the final vote. I think it depends on whether it's whether or not it's a certificate of appropriateness or a public hearing. If it's a public hearing, you certainly have it. Right. Yes, if it's a public hearing, we obviously do that and take public comments at that time. But on a certificate of appropriateness, uh, uh, you know, we never have. Um, and it has always been in this position on the agenda. doesn't mean it always has to stay there. Would you like to see it moved up? I think it would be appropriate at some so. point to ask for any comment. All right. Mr. Boswell, next uh, meeting then, uh, just after approval of minutes, let's uh, have the public comment time. We'll change that. Well, I was number one. I was making the thing as we go through our procedure and before we take the vote. If there's a motion or a second, then maybe it's... No, I don't think that. No. 
I don't think so on a certificate of appropriateness. Now you, you, you could, you, you know, again, you could schedule a public hearing on anything. I think that's really up to, you know, to how it's brought up. Okay. Let's move that on the agenda then. All right. Anything else tonight? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 Mr. Bradley, all in favor say aye. 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 aye.